Hello and a very warm welcome to Megan and Harry News YouTube. Hi, Hugo here. How are you keeping? Hope you're all good. Megan has just appeared on the Fortune Most Powerful Women Next Gen Summit. She talked about being courageous, saying, Sometimes making the best decision for you and your family might not be the popular one. Speaking from her home in Santa Barbara, Megan continued, But when you really know who you are and you know what your belief system is and you live by the truth, then I think that can start to peel away the layers of where the fear comes in. She recommended remembering the phrase, my faith is greater than my fear when taking action or making decisions. She said, if you live knowing the truth, regardless of what anyone says, you'll be able to go to sleep with a clear conscience. She said before adding, most people are afraid of the unknown, but sometimes you need to take that leap. Megan said she hadn't had a personal social media account for a long time. She also touched on people using their voices on social media, saying, if you don't agree with something, don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. Don't hate, share. Share something from the right side of the issue so that that's what goes viral. When asked about how being a mum to 17-month-old Archie had changed her, Megan said, it makes you more courageous, it makes you so concerned for the world they're going to inherit. Here's a clip. Social media and building these healthy communities online is something you recently joined us to talk about at the Fortune Most Powerful Women Summit. But mm -hmm. so many of the young women here today are building their own brands on social media and figuring out healthy ways to engage. What are, the own, what are the strategies that you have developed for continuing to engage in a healthy way and reducing any harm to yourself from some of the more negative elements that are out there? You know, I have, for my own self-preservation, I have not been on social media for a very long time. I'd had a personal account years ago, which I closed down, and then we had one through the institution in our office that was in the UK separate from, but that wasn't, you know, that wasn't managed by us, that was a whole team. And so I think that that comes with the territory for the job that you have. I've made a personal choice to not have any account. So I don't know what's out there. And in many ways, that's helpful for me. I, I have a lot of concerns for people that have become obsessed with it. And it is so much a part of our daily culture for so many people that it's an addiction, like many others. And you know, there are very few things in this world where you call the person who's engaging with it a user. But if you look at social media and what it's doing in the same capacity as it does in creating addiction, what is the comp there? You know, people who are addicted to drugs are called users and people who are on social media are called users. And there is something algorithmically that is in there that is creating this obsession that I think is very unhealthy for a lot of people. So I would just say, as you're out there building your brands, as you're out there engaging with your friends online, just be conscious of what you're doing and understand that it is not limited to that one moment that you are creating an echo chamber for yourself. So the more that you engage with things that are negative, not just for other people that you might not know, but what it's doing to you as a human being will really have lasting effects and that there is an alternative to engaging in that kind of stuff. So I would say to just be really conscious and responsible. I don't think people have even started to, to scratch the surface on what this is doing to us. And I, and I wish more for especially the younger generation of women, you have the power to turn this around. So in other news, let's just take a look through the media and see what's going on. See. We have this story about Megan's appearance at the virtual summit. And once again, this morning, they were twisting it in the media, telling stories, distorting the truth to make Megan look bad as usual. Of course, to suit the press agenda. It says here, Megan Markle to speak at most powerful women virtual summit, charging guests £1,300. Megan's charging guests £1,300 to speak at a virtual summit? I've never heard of the like. What the hell? No, no, that's not the way it is. It says here, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, is to appear on Fortune's Most Powerful Women Next Gen virtual summit again this week, which is charging guests around £1,300. It continues, Meghan Markle is set to speak at a virtual summit, which is charging guests $1,750, which equates to £1,342. 
So this was all in the papers this morning, loads of different articles going on about this. So Megan is charging, is she? No, no, no. That is completely untrue and that is misleading. Megan hasn't sparked any fury because Megan isn't charging anybody for anything, okay? It's the Virtual Summit Fortune Live Media Group. They are the ones who seem to be charging this amount for people to attend. It says on their website, participation in the Fortune Most Powerful Women Next Gen Summit is by invitation only and by subject to approval. The registration fee of $1,750 includes the virtual summit and all benefits, which is, in all fairness, pretty expensive. But Megan is an invited speaker and she's not running the event. It's not, it's got nothing to do with her. In other news, I see this article and it's a long, a long overdue article in Grazia magazine. It says here, the title, is anybody else noticing the awful comments about Meghan Markle on the palace's socials? Why Kensington Palace needs to turn their Instagram comments off? Oh yes, it's been like that for a long time. They don't need to turn them off. They just need to get someone to get up off their backsides and moderate the comments. Or do they like to keep these offensive comments up there? That's what I'm beginning to think. Maybe that's a possibility. That is a distinct possibility. We have already heard from Robert Lacey, this writer of the new book, Battle of Brothers, he reckons, he said yesterday, or was it the day before, in the Times magazine or Times interview, he said that one of the members of the royal family supposedly hates Meghan. So, you know, when you see comments, offensive comments and racist comments left up on the royal social media accounts from quite a long time back, you start to question, are they left there on purpose? As I'm pretty sure if these were things said about Kate Middleton, then we would see them swiftly removed. But oh no, no, not for Meghan, they stay there. The article goes on to showcase some of the comments left on the Royal Social Media accounts. I'm not gonna show them, I'm not gonna mention them here. You can imagine the type of crap the trolls say. And it says, basically it says they need to do something about it and they should, but they don't. It's interesting, isn't it? As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified in the future when I upload videos.